Good morning, and thanks for joining us on this Memorial Day Monday here on News 6 Plus and ClickOrlando.com. You're watching Breakfast with Bridget. It is 7.30, May 27, 2024. I'm your host, Bridget Ellison. It is good to be with you. Hope that you are well wherever you are and able to take some time out to join us and have a little coffee talk. Uh, we're getting ready for the end of our holiday weekend here. Of course, Memorial Day, many ceremonies going on today and many people still traveling and uh, at their different destinations, including here in Central Florida. And the weather is certainly a big attraction for many people. And meteorologist Jonathan Kegis is here with us this morning. And uh, Jonathan, we're coming off of a hot weekend and it's continuing into this holiday Monday. Hey, Bridget, I can't hear you. Okay. Here, so I don't know. Uh, so that's so I should have talking to me. Yeah, it is hot. It is hot. Yeah, temperatures today uh, on this Memorial Day getting back into the upper 90s. Uh, that's going to be record territory for a lot of us today. I don't think we break records, but we're going to get back into the upper 90s this afternoon. It's going to feel like 100, 105, pretty much what we had Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. More of the same today. Uh, rain chances are a zero today, pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's once we're going to get into tomorrow and really beyond that's when rain chances start to come back at us through the afternoon i don't know where the volume is on this thing i don't know what they did to me there is the we hear we you go. we there hear we you though yeah got me perfect i just i'd like to have a conversation with i Bruce. know yeah there we go i got right, it good. though i don't good. know so whoever was on this computer oh i know sound, oh move, move the volume thing yeah like to a weird spot yeah <laughs> so but that's the, where I, it is. I, so you said we're safe from the rain chances. I know that I was um, trying to catch up on chores and stuff over the weekend, and I mm -hmm. picked up a nice downpour on Saturday evening. Yes. I'm, I'm in southwest Orange. Yeah, no, there were a few out there uh, yesterday. There were a few out there on Saturday mm -hmm. as well. We had some stronger thunderstorms in Brevard uh, over the last couple of days as well. The sea breeze has kind of been pinned over toward the 95 corridor. So that's where we've had most of the action over the last couple of days. We do need the rain pretty much everywhere. My grass is crunchy is everything. I don't know how yours is doing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, it's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we could use some help uh, from Mother Nature out there over the next couple of days. There will be storms again tomorrow. Hmm. Only 40% shot, though, so not everybody's going to see them, unfortunately, if you need the rain. But uh, we're, we're trying. We're but today trying. is that heat index and, and pretty much no rain chances. Yeah, it's going to be really, really hot today. Uh, 97 is the forecast. And then we're going to get up to that 100 to 105 category uh, when you factor in humidity as well. One other thing, too, uh, we're going to watch for. We have a couple of big brush fires around. There was, uh, mm. You've seen the video. We showed it this morning on the show. Uh, big lightning strike mm -hmm. sparked a really, really big fire on Merritt Island uh, Wildlife Refuge. I'm going to bring up my fire map mm -hmm. here because I want to show you what's going on with that. Um, We've got a couple the satellite, this uh, satellite image here. It's really cool because it can pick up where the hot spots are um, throughout Central Florida, really throughout the entire country. We have it, of course, on the Central Florida side. We have a few hot spots in Seminole County where we're going to see some smoke potentially get through. And then we have right under the A&P in Cape Canaveral, that little red square there. That's the fire that ignited from the lightning strike over the weekend. And as I show you the model smoke, it's really cool these days. We can mm. model the smoke from where those wildfires are. Of course, we also have a few uh, brush fires burning through the 75 corridor. And where you see that kind of wispy stuff coming through, that's going to be the smoke uh, mm. inching over from the I-75 corridor. But watch what happens. The breeze is going to shift out of the east later today off of the Atlantic. And that's going to blow some of the smoke from those uh, brush fires in Seminole County. And then, of course, the bigger one that's on Merritt Island over. And you see the colors start to change to a more darker gray and then a yellow indicating that the smoke is going to be thicker as well. So don't be surprised if you're grilling out today in Lake Mary or Heathrow, Sanford, certainly Geneva and Chuliota. Also in Winter Park, maybe Maitland, even as far to the west as Apopka in Orlando, if you're smelling smoke or seeing some of that haze, it's coming from those brush fires and wildfires in Seminole and especially in Brevard County on Merritt Island. So just a extra heads up for that today as you uh, may be wondering why it smells like smoke. It could be from those two or three fires that are burning in Seminole and Brevard County, Bridget. Yeah, and it seems like just the, the pattern we're in, 
the more rain chances we get that have mm-hmm. those those you know storm components yeah. it's just like a match to tinder basically it is and especially because we just have not had any rain we're in that drought situation through the 95 corridor as well so we could use the rain that's going to be the, the biggest theme going forward of course we're in the wildfire season now for mm-hmm. florida uh once we start to get into the wet season quote unquote as we move closer into june and especially july that threat goes down a little bit but of course we all know it we have a ton of lightning and those things can spark fires uh like nobody's business especially if the tinder is dry as you mentioned Mm -hmm. all right jonathan thank you and you know we'll be talking about the beaches as well and that rip current risk continues Mm -hmm. so people should also be mindful of that if they're going to go out to the beaches always no matter how great a swimmer you are mother nature is always going to win the ocean's always going to win so just make sure you're paying attention like you said as he was out there all morning talking about the danger again what pay attention to the signage the lifeguards know best so whatever you encounter at the beach they're going to be alerting you to that just make sure you're paying attention and just make sure you're always respecting the ocean that's the that's the biggest thing for sure for sure very strong force there so absolutely we'll talk about that some more in a little bit jonathan thank you and hopefully you people will it. keep it cool out there and stay hydrated that's right glad i can hear you now <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> all right we'll see you later and so uh trooper steve is going to be on patrol a little bit later this morning he's out in results one and nice pin sir thank you it's my red poppy flower mm-hmm. I also noticed it so, on Google today too for Memorial Day. It's yes, a so flower. we could we could get yeah we could give our viewers a little history on that. It was started in I believe September of 1920 by the American Legion as a sign that uh, flower that represents uh, all the fallen in World War One and then every single life lost in a war since then. Mm-hmm. This represents and honors them. So scientists believed that after the wars in Europe, uh, these these flowers flourished all over the battlefields mm-hmm. where battles had taken place and. Uh, they contribute part of it to a lot of the rubble and the nutrients that were left in the ground. And unfortunately, it is a representation of the blood that was uh, spilled mm-hmm. during these wars. So that's why I have my poppy flower on today yeah. for Memorial Day. So I'm glad you noticed that. I, I mean, well, it was I, hard so, to miss, but most people don't enough, know what it means. I Well, I first encountered it uh, actually in a similar situation. I was, I was in Israel in Golan Heights area, and... Th- there was a, a meadow there with a lot of poppies. And I remember I was taking mm-hmm. a lot of pictures while I was on that tour um, across Israel. And of course, you know, I think also there the same symbolism, you know, worldwide with, with the poppies and, and the fallen. So um, it's Absolutely. a beautiful symbol. So, well, that must have been a beautiful trip. It, it was. It was hot, though. I took it in the middle of summer about Oof. about My 11 goodness. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my. And if we're complaining I, that this is hot, I can only imagine. I, I have an interesting story. I don't know if you know my Syria story, but we'll we'll talk about that later, how I ended up in Syria okay. by accident. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, no, but I'm glad you're now here with us in Central Florida because mm-hmm. that sounds a little scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah my goodness. Well, that's an <laughs> offline story. So we'll talk offline okay. with that. Uh, today, Bridget, I'll be welcoming in a former guest of yours. And two results one, uh, former guest with Breakfast with Bridget talking about veteran services mm-hmm. and how they are taking care of veterans, senior veterans. They are a former veteran seniors? themselves. Absolutely. And uh, it is, I'm trying to pull up uh, this individual's name here. Give me one second and I will, his name is Charles Rivera. Oh, yes. And Charles Rivera will be joining me today. Um he is a uh, former Air Force guy, so mm-hmm. that should be pretty awesome. And we figured, you know, it is Memorial Day, and it has a heavy uh, undertone to it, mm-hmm. but there are so many veterans within our community that need care, so why not bring in a positive story about people just helping people, and I'm glad we're able to do that today. Yeah, and what's so awesome is there are so many 
older adults who are able to still get out and about, but they're also able to help those who are less mobile. And I think one of the one of the families he helps is a, is an older couple, I think in their 90s. So I'm sure he'll tell you about Whoa, them. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So there it sounds like a really sweet couple and he's able to really help them out because they are, are a little more limited in doing things alone, but he's there for them. So it's a great it's a great relationship. You know who's not there for us today? Mm. The roads. There mm. ain't nobody out there, Bridget. Nobody. Well, nobody. We're not seeing delays anywhere, and I'm not complaining. Let me show yeah. you real quick. So out here, this is the only thing I'm watching at 417 in the 28 out by Lee Vista. This ain't going to slow you down, so you are good to go. 408 <laughs> westbound right now. No problems out here. There's not a – look at this. Look at this screen. Left side of your screen, normally, this is a parking lot. Right now, there's no one out there. Take your time driving. Look at this I have for you. Just consider, you know, the meteorologists like to take credit. I'm going to take credit. Here's a gift from your traffic expert to you guys. Eastbound and westbound I-4 at Champions Gate, there's no one there. Mm. There's no delay. It is moving perfectly fine. When can you get from Champions Gate to downtown Orlando in 24 minutes? Never. Right now. That's a 35 to, <laughs> right now. Yeah, right now on a holiday, Bridget. And that's about it. It is crazy. Pleasant Hill Road, Poinciana Boulevard, Ham Brown. No delays right now. There is no school, obviously. So we'll get used to this for about two months and then reality will come and smack us back in the face. Sand Lake East and Westbound, nice and clear through the Edgewood Bell Isle area. Minor crash right now on 434, but that's not going to slow you down either. Over by I-4, the beaches. This is where it's going to get busy. Over the, uh, the next couple of hours, We'll start to see increases along our highways, 95, 528, I-4, out by Daytona Beach, and, of course, Ponce Inlet, New Smyrna. But as of right now, this morning, we're looking good. Your other drive times across central Florida in the opposite direction, sitting in the green. Bridget, it is beautiful out there. Let's keep it that way. No mm -hmm. uh, major shutdowns across our area. We are looking good. Uh, I feel like just driving around backwards because there's no traffic out here right now, but I'm not going to do that. So. Um, and you yeah, even had a crash earlier. You. There were two those two overturned vehicles, but that was no serious injuries. So that was good to hear. No serious injuries. They wanted to play bumper cars this morning. That was that first one that I showed you on mm -hmm. 417. So they mm -hmm. got the left lane blocked, but there's no traffic out there. So the main lines are moving pretty good. So if you're yeah. out and about, the biggest thing today is proactive safety, making sure. Yeah. Because there's no, there's nothing out there that's going to slow you down. Yeah. So you just but need still to make watch sure you're your speed. Attention. I mean, it looks like the exactly. speed was a factor in that, right? Yeah, because uh, just because we have the, some of us have the day off doesn't mean those troopers don't. So they're out there. So watch out for them because they're watching for you. Okay, Alrighty. good deal. Well, we'll see you at, you said 10 or 1030? Was it? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. All right, we'll see you then with seniors helping bye seniors. Bye. Thanks. All right. So we want to get to some of that news. Like we said, a busy, busy beach day ahead. And News Six's Ezzie Castro has more on like what Jonathan mentioned a few moments ago, this near record heat and also tons of people headed to the beach. But um, they are the, the law enforcement and the lifeguards want you to swim near a lifeguard and just try to stay safe out there today. Here's Ezzie. The further inland you get, you know, you get no breeze over here. You got this constant nice breeze, at least it keeps you cool when you sweat. William Schrock says the beach is the place to be this Memorial Day weekend. Despite the hot temperatures, he says it's about having balance and staying hydrated. Usually I'm going by 1 o'clock. Uh, you know, I get here about 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock, leave a little earlier. You know, drink plenty of liquids, but stay in the water as much as possible. Luna Jean-Pierre was also keeping an eye on the weather and came to the beach prepared. Honestly, I just keep myself very hydrated. I've been drinking a lot of water. I've been trying to stay more so under the tent before going out so I don't have to like be in the heat for real until I'm in the ocean. With near record temperatures expected, lifeguards along the coast are bracing for another busy day at the beach. In fact, the weather service is warning of moderate rip currents, something Beach Patrol wants you to watch out for. It's extremely important no matter what. If there's not a lifeguard out there, don't go in the water. There you have it. If there's not a lifeguard, don't go in the water. Even when you go in just the shallow end, 
Sometimes those waves will just pull you away. So be extra careful with your loved ones if you are going out there to the beaches today. But, you know, definitely a nice day to go and enjoy that if you can. Also a busy day out at the airport. You know, we keep talking about this travel. And if you have had to go in and out of Orlando International, you already know this. But they are expecting a very busy day today as part of this Memorial Day uh, weekend. So they're expecting 176,000 passengers today and more than 88,000 departures and arrivals. And travelers are being urged to get to the airport three hours before their flights. Meantime, if you are picking up someone, they're saying, please don't circle the airport, you know, adding to the congested traffic around the airport. Go to the cell phone lot and wait there, please. And because it is Memorial Day, we want to bring you a special story from Emily McLeod. Uh, there is a young man who is traveling everywhere and trying to find World War II veterans to tell their stories and so that we can preserve that history. So um, on this Memorial Day, we want to highlight this young man. Emily McLeod has more on his important mission. My name is Rishi Sharma. I run a nonprofit and YouTube channel called Remember World War II, and so I'm a World War II veteran interviewer. For the last seven years, Rishi Sharma has been on a mission to meet and interview every World War II veteran of allied countries. I'm here to interview Mr. Bruno. You came up with the idea to interview our World War II veterans and share their stories. What inspired you to do that? I've always read books about the war. You mm -hmm. watched Saving Private Ryan, mm -hmm. Band of Brothers, but I wanted to meet some of them in the flesh just to express my gratitude. And I'd never been to a retirement home, and the director was so happy to see a young person there that he personally introduced me to all the veterans. It was like 25 of them at the wow. time. And they were so happy to see someone show a genuine interest in their life. Mm -hmm. And so I just, uh, God bless my mom, I, I got a kiss. She got me a camera from Costco. The director of the retirement home let me use an empty office space. And then for the next two months, I would ride my bike there after school and interview them. Hi. How you doing? We were there on Sunday as Sharma prepared to interview U.S. Army veteran Albert Bruno. Bruno was a soldier in the 134th Infantry Regiment of the 35th Infantry Division in the United States Army during World War II. There's a lot of people. We also had the chance to sit down with Bruno, who recently turned 100 years old, as he told us about serving on the front lines in Normandy, being taken prisoner by German troops, and eventually escaping captivity after nine months. After escaping, Bruno stumbled upon British troops and was eventually reunited with an American soldier. I woke up, and there was an American soldier there. He came with them. When I got up, I ran, I grabbed him and kissed him, and then says, come on, let's go. Bruno says he appreciates Sharma traveling to meet him and sharing his story along with the thousands of World War II veterans he has interviewed. I, I thought it was fascinating. Yeah. It was nice. It was so nice of him to come all the way over here to, to do that story. I appreciate it so much. He, he did such a, a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. He did, really did. In Orange County, Emily McLeod getting results, News 6. Isn't that awesome? And... You know, every day that goes by, we are losing more and more of our World War II veterans. So this is just really important work this young man is doing. And so we have Sharma's uh, contact information under this story right now on ClickOrlando.com. If maybe you know some World War II veterans that he can come and talk to and, and get their stories on record. So go over to ClickOrlando.com, click on that story, share it, help get the word out. Certainly a great cause there. When we talk about Memorial Day, we also think about getting together with family and friends. And of course, you got to feed all of those people. But the prices, um, as we've talked about before, prices are up. And so some cookout staples are up as much as 50% apparently. And CBS's Jonathan Vigliotti shows us more about why the supermarket is not the only place that we are still paying more. Whether it's on the grill or at the grocery store, Americans are feeling the pinch of higher food prices this Memorial Day weekend. We spend almost $500 to organize this picnic. The average cost of a holiday cookout for a family is about $30, up 10% from last year. Ground beef prices increased 15%, while the cost of relish jumped 50%. So everything is super expensive. 
For the nearly 40 million drivers expected on the roads this holiday, gas prices are also slightly higher this year, up four cents a gallon. Most of the summer this year could be very close to last year. Prices well below their records that we saw in 2022 and not a bad time for Americans to hit the road. One sector where Americans aren't paying more, airports. While there are record crowds, there aren't record prices. The cost of an airline ticket is nearly 6% lower than a year ago. Rental car prices are down 10%. All right, so there you have it with those travel costs and cookout costs. Now we have some health news for you. Apparently, these drugs that we've been talking about a lot lately, Ozempic, Wagovi, with semaglutide, these drugs originally were not prescribed for weight loss, but then now becoming more popular as a weight loss drug. But what the studies are now showing is that this drug has another benefit or a positive side effect. A new study out of Sweden found that the active ingredient in drugs like Wagovi and Ozempic may protect your kidneys. Researchers found that those who took the drugs were 22% less likely to have kidney problems than those who don't. But uh, this is uh, not necessarily people taking it as a weight loss drug. It's people taking it for health concerns, you know, regarding their um, their other health issues, heart health and things like that. So just lots more coming out about this drug, but it's very, very interesting. We want to remind you that we are on the road again soon. We're, we're going to go to Kissimmee now, and that zip code will be 34744. So if you know some stories that we should be telling in Kissimmee or some issues we should be covering in Kissimmee, please let us know. Before we hit the road, we'll be putting those stories together, and then we will go live from Kissimmee for our evening newscast. But we want to know what makes the community great. We want to know the stories that you want to see, and we would like to hear from you. So go to clickorlando.com slash hits the road for more on that. And we also want to tell you about uh, a story from our Troy Campbell in terms of the affordable housing in Kissimmee. And that is something that has been uh, talked about a lot in Osceola County where people are pushing to get more affordable places to live. This is something that's happening across the country, especially in Central Florida as well. So one commissioner in Kissimmee has an interesting idea. Here's Troy. And you were tackling a list of potential solutions. How did this one become one that captured your attention? I looked at my garage and I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why can't we convert garages into units, studios? That might help. Kissimmee Mayor Pro Tem Angela Eady says during a recent walk through her neighborhood, she was alerted to a couple and their young child sleeping inside of their vehicle. She says it inspired her to present to the city commission back on May 7th, a plan to convert residential garages into studio apartments for affordable housing. So what would be your message to homeowners who have garages, they don't live in an HOA deeded neighborhood? I would say that if you are in need of extra income and if you are compassionate about people, then this may be something that you may want to pursue. The commission has instructed city staff to look into it. And it's going to take some time. You know, they didn't build Rome in a night, so we, we got to look at all the obstacles that we can come across, who benefits from this, the whole nine yards. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is the Florida Department of Health. They say that in 2019, right before the pandemic, estimated 214 people were homeless in Osceola County. However, their last count in 2023, that number has shot up nearly 60%. They're estimating 358 homeless in the county. Why do you think it's so important to be compassionate for people who are in that situation? Because I took an oath to protect, defend, and obey not only the U.S. Constitution, but the laws and the ordinances of the city of Kissimmee. In Kissimmee, Troy Campbell, Getting Results, News 6. So that is an interesting concept there. Oh, thank you for the cafecito. We have a tradition here that started with Ezzy Castro and then Trooper Steve and now Marcus also making cafecito for us. So that's how we get through the morning. That's how we get up so early. 
powered by caffeine. But anyway, uh, yeah, so we'll keep you posted on what happens in Kissimmee. And again, we want to hear from you about stories that you would want to see covered in the Kissimmee area. That's 347-44. So let us know at clickorlando.com slash hits the road. We also want to tell you about our hurricane special. That is something that we work on every year right as hurricane season is starting up. And so our whole pinpoint weather team is working on customized stories about Central Florida, about getting ready for storms, taking a look back at some of the historic storms that we have gone through over the years. And, you know, we don't like to talk about hurricane season because sometimes it can make you feel anxious. But Saturday is the first day of hurricane season. And so, you know, while there's nothing threatening right now, we do want to be prepared because it only takes one. And of course, the forecasters and the people doing all the number crunching are predicting a busy season. But again, it only takes one storm to be devastating. So it's all about being prepared to weather the storm. So the special is called Weathering the Storm. And so uh, we are aimed at getting results for you and giving you everything you need to be prepared and introducing you to the people behind the scenes, those emergency workers and infrastructure workers who try to make things run smoothly when a storm does come our way. So we'll take a look at all of that in depth on Monday, June 3rd at 8 p.m. Make sure you check that out. And then we'll also have some extra content coming up on clickorlando.com. So don't miss that as well. But mark your mark your calendar for next Monday for that. Well, straight ahead is Weather Wise with meteorologist Jonathan Kegas and then Super Trooper Steve on patrol at 830. And so we'll see you back here tomorrow at 730. And I'll see you at noon on WKMG. Take care.